next is um the four the four next in our discussion will be these four numbers right so uh if i may just quickly draw up uh two blocks okay so this is the queue and this is the server yep okay so if we have this then basically just ignoring the boundary for a little bit of uh for for the sake of uh, clarity then we basically can can have a little bit of a sketch of where the four numbers belong uh if now first of all notice that we are concerned with the count the queue average queue length average time in the queue the the count average queue length and average number of customers in the system and then the timing the average time in the queue average time in the system now think about it uh let's just think about the queue portion of the queue system right so this this part if the average queue length is long is large does it imply that the average queue time is also long that means long queue means long waiting time is that true think about it just for a few seconds from your past experience long queue means long waiting time until you get served and of course conversely uh, short queue means short waiting time in the queue is that true i'm asking is that true well of course there are counter examples right but is it true in general most of the time can we make this uh, statistical conclusion that yeah most of the time well turns out it doesn't necessarily have to be so okay so uh what is important is that we sometimes can have long queue but uh the queue moves very quickly so much so that your waiting time is really not that long okay uh you may also have a case when the average queue length is short but you have to wait for very very long time ever been to a you know supermarket right so you pick the shortest queue isn't it because your instinct tells you that you should go for the shortest queue and then you go in there only to find uh this person in front of you trying he saw her credit card failed another card please can you try again with the first one? Oh no let me call someone just hang on a while and then you get stuck for a long long time isn't it so turns out that the only the queue with only one person and the rest will have like four or five other people right and you choose that queue thinking that it is shorter for you to wait till your turn turns out to be not the case so we that's why we need queue analysis we need to have you know a sort of model to to go through the entire mathematical calculations and then tell us uh, actually what is average queue time what is the average queue length so let's just put them in perspective uh, on the counting side first then this definitely is lq let's just draw it here all right and we can of course write a ls which is not in the list all right ls and then we say that l is the sum of lq and ls statistically on average wise right average wise that's why we need the word averages uh, instantaneously this may not be true but uh, average wise it is correct that l equals to lq plus ls what is ls average number of uh, customers in the service station Right now we have one server so it is either zero or one so we average up it'll be a number between zero to one yeah but uh when we have multiple servers then it could be a number between zero to k the number of servers in the service station so that's for counting and the timing would be average time in the queue and i'm going to purposely draw it uh disproportionately so the physical queue might be this long the lq long the WQ, the waiting time, average waiting time in the queue need not be, be you know, the same because of course they're in different units, but I borrow the same physical drawing. And then of course the WS will be average amount of time in the service station. Fortunately, 
even though we have introduced a new symbol here, ws, we know that it is by definition the same as 1 over mu, the average time spent with the server or the average service time. So we therefore can conclude in the average sense as well that, um, how should I draw it, w is equal to wq plus ws. Okay. W is the average time in the system. We can also make it more understandable in, uh, uh, by translating it a little bit from the perspective of the customer. So W represents uh, the average amount of time that a typical customer, a randomly chosen customer, would experience uh, going into the system and then coming out from the system. So if we go into a clinic, to see a doctor, we have to wait to see a doctor, right? And if that's it, after seeing doctor, no medic medicine, so we just go home. In that case, uh, W represents the average amount of time to go into the clinic, queue up, and then see the doctor, and then exit the clinic. Okay, so simple as that. So these four values are very important uh, numbers for us to consider. Is the waiting time uh, good or not good? Okay, in the context of the of the queue system, for example, if it's banking system, waiting time of um, ten minutes probably is okay. Yeah, um, but in the case of um, hospital emergency department, waiting time of ten minutes might be considered pretty bad. So we want to interpret the numbers in the context of the particular queue system. But how to calculate it is the role of queuing theory right and the formulas that we'll see so the four numbers there next two and the last two will be the probability of having n people in the system where n can be any integer zero until any number you want to talk about okay so probability of having n customers in the entire system remember that uh, the server is also one possible parking lot position for a customer to be located. So if we look around the entire system between Q and S, right, we can find uh, definitely one possibility, one lot at the server, and then zero to many, many, infinitely many, many lots in the Q system. That's our assumption. Now, the physical space may not have room for infinite number of customers to, to queue up, but theoretically, we allow for the possibility uh, for infinite number of customers to queue up. Okay? Of course, with uh, diminishing probability so that it will mimic reality. That is more and more unlikely that you get 1 million customers queuing up at the bank. So uh, in this case, P of N means that definitely one customer, if N is one or more, definitely one customer must be... Uh, drawn at the server. If you have only one customer in the system, that customer must be currently being served. That's the kind of constraints that we place on it. So it cannot be that if there is one customer, the one customer is drawn at the start of the queue system, refusing to be served. Cannot be. Cannot be. All right. So this part you have to understand. Then it makes your interpretation of exercises, exam questions, and actual real-life applications easier. You're calculating the correct probabilities, right? The formula understands the n as n number of customers in the system. And it also understands the constraints placed on it. In other words, the n customers cannot be just all stuck in the queue with the <clears throat> service station empty. It is impossible so long as n is, n is one or larger. All right. So uh, we definitely must put at least one uh, and definitely one customer per server going beyond today's lesson if we have more than one server each server should be first filled with customers and if we have leftover then the rest will all be lined up in the queue part of the queue system so once you get this idea clear then we can use p of n formula assuming it exists we use that formula plug in n lambda mu whatnot and then out comes a probability from the formula, just like a calculator. So this probability will be a number between 0 to 1. 
let's think of certain interesting cases, such as what if n is zero? Now that's not a wrong number to say, right? We do have one server, but customer can be zero, right? Uh, momentarily. So what is the amount of proportion of time across a long, long observation time that we find that when we snapshot the system, like take a camera and then randomly at random interval snapshot, right? It could happen that out of 100 snapshots, 99 snapshots all show no customers. Possible, right? Okay, so if that's the case, then the probability of finding no one in the system is 99% or 0 0.99. Of course, we can also say randomly take 100 pictures, 100 CCTV camera pictures, and out of these 100, if there is at least one customer, we will not count. So we go and count those camera shots that contain no customer at all. And maybe we found only two. So in that case, that means P of zero equals to 0 0.02 because it's two out of 100. Yeah. So that's, that's the calculation or the way we can think about it. Of course, the formulas will provide us with higher precision calcula calculated results, but that's the way we think about the probability. Then, of course, from the business perspective, what do you think about probability of having no one in the system if it is very high? So 99% of the time, you go and uh, inspect, randomly check your shop, and you find no one is there. Is that a good sign? Maybe not so, right? Maybe not so. Uh, what about, what if P0 is very low? 99, uh, sorry, 1% of the time, you find that your shop has nobody otherwise it's always having someone in there maybe not a lot but someone in there so that is kind of better if you are having a retail shop okay um because because you have customers visiting but customers visiting does not mean that they are buying if they're buying it does not mean that they're buying expensive or high revenue items so uh, of course the the whole profitability of the business must take into account other measures but of course, no one in the system uh, basically is, a, is, is not a good sign saying that you have revenue, right? So, so that is the first thing we try to work on. And we might tweak around and learn from the formulas that, oh, these are the levers to perhaps tweak our businesses to try to uh, jack up the P0 a little bit or something. Okay, so uh, that's just a brief discussion of the outputs given by uh, the Q system theory. And uh, next section, we'll look at Little's Law that plays a big part in guiding our thinking and the calculations in our formulas.